Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. What's up guys, I'm Andy from 1A Auto. In this video, I'm gonna be replacing the front hub and bearing on this 2012 Ford Escape. If you need these parts or other parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com. One thing you're gonna to wanna to do anytime you do any kind of front end repair or suspension repair, you're gonna to wanna to go to a local shop and have your alignment performed, otherwise you're gonna have premature tire wear. All right, I'm gonna crack these lug nuts free. I'm just gonna use a 19 millimeter socket and a breaker bar, loosen these up. Now I'm going to raise and support the vehicle. I'm using a two post lift. If you're doing this at your house, you can use a jack and jack stands. All right, now I'm going to remove the lug nuts. It's easier to use the socket when you're taking the lug nuts off. The tire's on there pretty good. So I'm actually going to take one of the lug nuts, put it back on. Then I'm going to take a hammer and from the back side, I'm just going to hit the tire and loosen it up. The lug nut stays on there so that the tire doesn't go flying off. Now I can remove that lug nut, pull the tire off. First thing I want to do is take this spring off. This just holds the caliper to the bracket, puts tension on the caliper. So I'm just going to use some large grooved pliers. I'm just going to squeeze right here a little bit and then just take a screwdriver, straight blade screwdriver, get in here, pry this out a little bit. It's a good idea to wear safety glasses when you do this, just in case it goes flying. Pull that out. Now on the back side, the caliper, there's bolts that hold this to the caliper bracket. They're under these little caps, so just take a straight blade screwdriver, take the caps off. It's one. Here's the other one. Now to take these two caliper bolts out, I'm gonna use a seven millimeter Allen socket and a ratchet. Take these out. All right, that will slide out a little bit. This is actually a caliper slide bolt. Pull that out. We'll do the same for the other one. All right, pull that out. If these bolts don't come out all the way, that's okay as long as you pull them back a little bit just to slide the caliper out. Now we're gonna grab this caliper. We're just gonna take a straight blade screwdriver, go in between the rotor and the caliper. We just want to compress the piston just a little bit, just so that we can get the caliper off. You can pry down here, slide the caliper off. The inboard pad is going to come with the caliper. You slide that out. Now I'm going to use this caliper hanger. We actually sell these at 1AAuto.com. Wrap it around the coil spring and go through the caliper here. That's going to relieve tension on the hose. You don't want to just hang it from the hose. Slide that out of the way. All right, with the caliper right here, I can just remove this pad, just slide it out like that. Then we can remove this pad, just take a screwdriver. Sometimes they get stuck in here, it's frozen right there. So that's gonna give you some issues when you're driving. It's not gonna stop very well. And just try to slide it out like that. Now we're going to remove these two caliper bracket bolts. I'm going to use an 18 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. Loosen these up. Loosen the other one up. All right, once they're loose, you can take them out by hand.
As I take this top one out, I'm gonna support the caliper bracket with my other hand. Then I can grab it and just slide it up. I'm gonna take these clips off. These little retainer clips just hold the rotor on from the factory. They're not necessary for when you're driving the vehicle. I'm just gonna use some straight cutters. Grab the clip and just break them off. Take that one off as well. Now this rotor, if there wasn't any corrosion on it, it would come right off, but I have corrosion, so I'm gonna use a hammer and just hit right in these locations, being careful not to hit the studs. All right, this uh, rotor's on there pretty good, so I'm actually gonna take some rust penetrant, spray it down, just spray it in all the stud holes. Just spin this around, and then spray it this way. Let it soak for a couple minutes. Now that that's soaked for a little bit, take the hammer again, just give it some taps. There we go. Broke free, now I can grab the rotor, slide it off. I wanna take this axle nut off. If I just go to take it off with the one and a quarter socket and the breaker bar, the whole thing is gonna spin. So what I need to do is I lowered the vehicle down and I'm gonna take a pry bar, stick it in between the studs and have the pry bar supported by the ground and that'll prevent the axle from spinning, and then I can loosen it up. Yep, that's nice and loose. Remove this, go back up. Before I take this nut off, I just want to tap the axle, see if it's loose. That's just pushing the CV axle in a little bit, just to make sure it's loose. This one seems pretty loose, which is good. We can loosen that up more once everything else is taken apart. So I'll take this nut off. I'm gonna remove the wheel speed sensor. I just wanna use an eight millimeter socket, an extension, and a ratchet. There's a bolt right here. Take this off. Take that bolt out. And I'll just grab the sensor, just rock it back and forth. Sometimes they stick in there pretty good. I'm just gonna take a straight blade screwdriver, pry underneath here a little bit. Try not to break the sensor. Let's get under the lip a little bit. You can twist the screwdriver back and forth. Just switch to a larger screwdriver. Try this up a little bit more. Just work it back and forth. Should be able to get it up. So underneath the sensor here, um, these little ears on the sensor are not clearing the hole. Um, there's some rust buildup on the hole, so it's causing the sensor not to be removed. So I'm just taking a pick and just trying to loosen up some of the rust in here. Just going back and forth. You could get um, some emery cloth and maybe try to slide it in there. It's going to be a little bit difficult. So I'm just trying to work the sensor back and forth. Hopefully I can do this without breaking the sensor. Also take some pliers. Just grab the sensor carefully work it back and forth. And there, it's starting to come out. And just slide it out, just like that. I'm gonna spray some rust penetrant on this bolt and nut right there. Also, I'm gonna do the lower strut nuts and bolts. 
and then also the outer tie rod in. Let those soak for a little bit. All right, I'm gonna take this pinch bolt out, the lower ball joint pinch bolt. I'm gonna use a 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet on the inside here. You could also use a wrench if you can fit one on there and a 15 millimeter socket and a ratchet on the nut. Loosen this up. All right, before I take this nut off, I'm just gonna spray some more rust penetrant on that bolt. It seems like that bolt's in there pretty good. Uh, I can turn it a little bit. So, but spray a little rust penetrant in there. And I'm gonna take a hammer and just tap on that. The reason why I leave the nut on there is so I don't mushroom the bolt. Just take a hammer, give it a little tap. Take this nut off. So to get this bolt out, I'm just gonna work it back and forth, hammer it in a little bit. And I'll take a punch, just so I don't ruin the threads on it. Punch it through this way. Take it out. So there's a couple different ways you can separate this lower ball joint. You take a hammer and just try to hammer down on the lower control arm. Sometimes if it's not too rusted, you'll be able to get it out. Or you can take a pickle fork. You just want to be careful if you're going to reuse the ball joint to not ruin the boot on the ball joint. So just make sure it's not pinching the pickle fork. There's also other types of tools. You can go that go in there and then they push down on the upper part of the ball joint. All right, now we're gonna try this tool. This is a different type of ball joint separator. Just pull the boot down a little bit, if possible. Slide this. I did have to turn the wheel a little bit so that this is coming to the outside. What this is gonna do, when I tighten this up, it's gonna push down on this lever and it's gonna push the ball joint straight down. I'm just gonna take a wrench, tighten this up. As I tighten this up, it's pushing down on the ball joint. Okay, this knuckle is stuck on there pretty good, the ball joint, I'm trying to get the ball joint out of the knuckle. So I'm just gonna take a little pry bar and just try to tap in here a little bit, just pry it out a little bit. That'll help the, release the ball joint. Right, so with this tool, as I tighten this up, it's gonna push down on the ball joint. And it's starting to move a little bit. You wanna make sure you keep soaking it with rust penetrant. All right, now that I let this soak a little bit, I'm gonna just use this tool and push this down. It's going down a lot nicer than before. It's just gonna push the top part of the ball joint through the knuckle. And you can see the ball joint's actually starting to go down a little bit. Now I'm just gonna try the pickle fork again. All right, so the lower ball joint's loose, which is good. I'm not gonna take that out completely. I want to take the nut off for the tie rod end and then also the nuts for the strut. So I'll take an 18 millimeter socket 
and a breaker bar, start to loosen this up. So if this stud starts to spin and while you're loosening up the nut, um, you can take a wrench, take an 18 millimeter wrench, and you can take a socket, an eight millimeter socket and a ratchet, and stick it on there. That'll prevent it from spinning. But in our case, ours is not spinning, so we're okay. So I'll just use a ratchet and a socket. Loosen this up. Right, and then you can take that off. All right, before I break that tie rod free from the knuckle, I'm gonna take these bolts out, or at least loosen them up. Just take an 18 millimeter socket on the nut and a brake bar and an 18 millimeter wrench. Loosen these up. Same with this one. Once it's kind of loose, I can use a ratchet. Or if it's really loose, I can just use my fingers. Oh, it's still pretty tight. Take that nut off. And I can take that nut off. Now I'm gonna take a hammer and release the tie rod from the knuckle. Just hammer this. Get that away, out of the way. Now I'm gonna take these two bolts out for the strut. Just hammer them this way. I am gonna use a little punch and to get these bolts out. I am gonna use a little punch and to get these bolts out. Slide that out. <clears throat> As this slides out a little bit, we can tap on the CV joint. You don't want to hit that too hard with the hammer or you're going to mushroom the end of it. We'll tap this, slide this out, grab the knuckle. It's just going to slide out like this. You can slide the CV joint to the side. And now we can access the top part of the ball joint a little bit. So I can take a long punch and slide that right on top of the ball joint and just carefully hammer the ball joint out while I hold the knuckle. And there we go. Be careful, you don't wanna ruin that tone ring or reluctor wheel. And there's the knuckle. So to get the hub, out of the knuckle and out of the bearing. I'm gonna have to use a press and be creative for how you get this out, but also be careful because it is dangerous. So we'll just press this out. It's starting to go down. So we got the, this hub part out of the knuckle and part of the bearing is still in there. Part of the race of the old bearing is still on the hub. So if you were replacing just the bearing, you would have to remove this part and that could be difficult as well. So the next step to pull out the rest of the bearing, I'm just gonna use some snap ring pliers right here. Pull the snap ring out. that. It's pretty rusty on there. Might have to wiggle it back and forth. Get that out. Be a good idea to replace this if you had a replacement. And then this area is all rusty. Here's part of the old bearing. 
just gonna take a wire brush and just clean out some of this rust so that the rest of the bearing comes out a little smoother. Now we're gonna press out that bearing from the back side. We'll use something that fits in there and try to press that out. Again, be careful when you're doing this. You're gonna be have to be creative to get it out. Almost out, not quite. I can just take this and ground, just take a little hammer and give it a tap. There we go. Here's the old bearing. Here's our old part. Here's our new part from 1aauto.com. The hub is the same, it's got the same studs. Same configuration, it's machined the same. The bearings are the same, same height. This bearing came apart when we were taking it apart. It comes with new snap rings. It's always a good idea to replace the snap ring when you take it apart. Also it comes with a new nut. Get yours at 1aauto.com and you'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, so we're gonna set the press up and we'll take the old the new bearing, doesn't matter which way it goes. Just slide that in position. Now I'm gonna take the old bearing. Um, it's a good thing that the balls actually came out that this side separated, because that'll make it easier to install. You want something that's just gonna push on the outside of the bearing. You don't want something pushing in the middle or you're gonna separate the new bearing. So slide that in position like that. Start pressing it in. Take the new snap ring. I'm going to just position this in the groove. I'll just do this by hand. Just push it in, make sure it's locked in all the way around, which it's good. Now we'll set this up in the press again and set the hub in position. Just line that up. Just fit this way. Up. Once in a while you want to check and just make sure everything's lined up. So when you're pressing the hub in, you want to make sure that the back side does not get pressed out. So take something that fits in here, like an old race or something, put that down so that when you're pressing the hub in, that doesn't push the bearing out. all the way down, you can loosen up on the press. And it's all set. Now we'll just take this knuckle, slide the CV joint through, and also the ball joint down below. Get that lined up. You might have to turn the, the hub a little bit and take the bolts for the strut, get this lined up. Once you get one of them in, the other one will be a little easier. Just push on it. 
just like that. We need to take the nut, both nuts, and get those started. Then I'll just use my 18 millimeter wrench and a 18 millimeter socket and ratchet. Get these snugged down. Then I'm gonna take a torque wrench and I'm gonna torque these bolts and nuts to 85 foot pounds. Same for the bottom one. I'll install the tie rod, slide the stud through, install the nut. All right, to get this started, I'm just gonna take a pry bar and pry the tie rod down between the lower part of the strut and the tie rod. And I'm prying down on the knuckle. That should prevent it, the stud from spinning a little bit. <clears throat> then at least I can get the nut started. And now I can get on there with a ratchet. All right, that's tight. Now I can take this off and I'll torque that nut. All right, now I'm gonna use the 18 millimeter socket and a torque wrench. I'm gonna torque this nut to 59 foot pounds. All right, now I need to get the lower ball joint pinch bolt in. Just need to line this up a little bit. I'm just gonna tap on the lower control arm to raise it up just a little bit. the nut on with a 15 millimeter socket. Use a ratchet and then I'll use a 13 millimeter socket for the bolt side and a ratchet. Then I'm going to use a torque wrench and I will tighten this nut to 46 foot pounds. Now we're going to install the axle nut. Good idea to have a new axle nut when you're doing this. And then we're gonna use, we're gonna use the pry bar, get this in here. So I'm gonna use this, this socket. This is a one and one quarter inch socket and a torque wrench. And I'm gonna to torque this to 221 foot pounds. Now we'll install the wheel speed sensor. Just slide that in position. And we'll take the bolt. Get the bolt started. We'll use a eight millimeter socket, extension, and a ratchet. We'll snug this bolt down. All right, that's good. Now we're gonna clean up this caliper bracket. Just use a wire brush. Clean up this surface right here. We'll do the same for the other side. So there's an area, if you take the new brake pads and slide them into the bracket, these slide really nice, but sometimes there's a lot of rust buildup right in that area. So if you take a small wire brush, you can clean that rust out. Or you can take a file if the rust is really bad and just carefully file some of that rust off. You don't want to do this too much because you don't want the, the pads to be loose in there, but you want to at least make sure they slide nicely. Make sure that's clean. And that should be good. You can take some brake parts cleaner and just clean these up. A rag and wipe them down. Do the same for the other side. So next I want to clean these pins. Um, they're pretty dirty. So 
to just use some brake parts cleaner and a rag isn't gonna do it. So I'll just use a little bit of sandpaper or emery cloth, wrap these up. Just clean some of this off. Looks pretty good, take a little brake parts cleaner and a rag. And it looks pretty good. And then we'll do the same with the other one. I'm just gonna slide the rotor on backwards first. Take some brake parts cleaner. Clean the back side of the rotor. There is a protective coating to prevent these from rusting. We wanna take that off before we install them. Flip it over. Take the brake parts cleaner, clean the front side. Take a rag and wipe it off. Just take a lug nut, slide this on. This is just gonna help um, keep the rotor in position, make it a little easier to install. Take the bracket and the two bolts for the caliper bracket, slide this in position. Install the bolts. Now I'm going to take an 18 millimeter socket and a torque wrench and I'm going to torque these to 129 foot pounds. Now I'm going to take the caliper, I'm just going to slide this off here, I'm going to flip it over. Right here, I'll take the old brake pad, slide that in there, and I'll use this caliper compressor. We actually sell this at 1AAuto.com. Slide this in position, and slowly twist it in. It's gonna push the caliper piston in. While that's doing that, it's pushing fluid through the hoses, through the lines, back up through the master cylinder into the reservoir. So it's a good idea to check your reservoir after you're done the brake job. Now I'm going to install the brake pads. I'm just going to take a little brake caliper grease, just slide it on the ears of the pad. This pad with the clips on it is the one that's going to go into the piston. So I'll just slide this into the piston right there that. This brake pad is going to go on the outside of the caliper bracket. Just put a little grease on the ear of this and then this one too. Be careful not to get any grease on the pad material. Just slide that in position there. We'll take the brake caliper and just slide that in position. Now we're just going to take these two brake caliper bolts. These are like slide bolts. So I'll just grease them up. Take the six millimeter Allen, slide that in position, get that started, and then I'll do the same with the other one. I'll just take a ratchet and tighten these up. Then I'm going to take my six millimeter Allen socket and a torque wrench, and I'm going to tighten this to 18 foot pounds. Now I'm going to take these little caps and slide these in position. The top one that keeps all the dust out. Next, we're gonna install the spring. Sometimes these can be difficult to install. This just basically holds the caliper onto the bracket so it doesn't move. Um, so I'm gonna start with the top here and slide that in position there. And then we're gonna, then we're gonna pry down right here, get this in position, and then just try to, oh, see that'll happen once in a while. Try to get this in position down there and then just push up, 
push it in, just like that. You can use a pry bar if you need to, but uh, just make sure the ears are down there and it's clipped in there. Now I'll take this nut off. We install the tire. Take the lug nuts, put the lug nuts on. Okay, now we're going to torque these lug nuts with a 19 millimeter socket and a torque wrench. I'm going to torque them to 100 foot pounds and I'm going to do that in a star pattern or a cross pattern because you want the wheel to be torqued down evenly. After I'm done the brake job, I want to make sure that I pump the brake pedal. There is going to be an air gap between the caliper piston and the brake pad. So we want to do this slow. That's going to compress the calipers. And it's starting to get hard, which is a good sign. And that's good. Then I'm going to pop the hood and check the brake fluid level. Install the prop rod right there. Brake master cylinder is right here and the reservoir is on top. And if I check the brake fluid, I can just wiggle the, it a little bit just to see where the level is. And my max level is right here, my min's down here. So I actually don't have to adjust this level. If it was too low, you'd have to add more. Generally on top of the cap, it tells you what kind of fluid to use. And we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.